Hello, in this video we're going to generate the, we're going to calculate the generating functions for a Cauchy distribution and the we're, we're just going to do it for the standard normal or the st standard Cauchy distribution, <laughs> not normal and uh, let's and let's just jump right in. Let's look at the characteristic function and it's defined as e to the i t x. So that says stick in i to the t x here times the Cauchy density and evaluate overall possibilities. Well here we end up a problem in when in complex analysis that this here um, ends up being a um, you, you it's undefined when when the x is i so it poses problems there and it's not a straightforward thing to integrate so I'm going to show you the answer which is e to the minus uh, absolute value of t and I'm going to point to a, a uh, video that I put out the other day it's called inversion formula part two um, and that's for a proof of this derivation here um, and so we'll we'll leave it at that and not re-derive it in this video so now if we take uh, let's let's find the first moment based on the characteristic function so that says take the derivative of the characteristic function evaluated at zero so the derivative of this evaluated at zero is this so it's e to the minus uh, absolute value of t times minus t divided by absolute value t evaluated at zero well when you plug in zero you can it this becomes undefined so the the first moment does not exist at t equals zero so that implies the first moment i.e. the mean does not exist and and you know we know that the Cauchy distribution doesn't have a mean and this kind of verifies it that it the, it blows up so here we have the moment generating function so we plug in e to the tx for here and um, and then evaluate <clears throat> now the goal is to find the uh, con convergence range. So where does this converge or you know become finite? What values of t? And so before we do that, I want to give you one note that we're going to use here. It's kind of a neat little proof. And and this is uh, if we have this re sum raised to the n. And then we take the binomial expansion of that. This is for x positive and t positive. So we get the binomial expansion here of this. Now, if we, if we take the first two terms of this, which is n choose. So this, well, first of all, this one to the thing, it kind of never plays a part. So let's just get rid of that. And then when, when k equals 0, um, that should be a k so when k equals 0 we have n choose 0 and then this raises to 0 which is 1 so we just have n choose 0 and then when k is 1 we have n choose 1 and then we have t to the x over n raised to the 1 and then the sum from 2 to n we just keep them here but if we note that t is positive and x is positive all these terms are positive so if we if we get rid of this and all of this we've just reduced this sum but what's left here the n cancel this is n choose one is n and that cancels with that n and it leaves t to the x so this um, this number here is less than t to the x <clears throat> right because all these terms are positive now let's take the limit of as n goes to infinity to both sides of this inequality well this here is the formula for e to the tx and there's no n here so it just stays t to the x 
So this is a quick little proof that e to the tx is always greater than, I guess it could be equal to um, tx. And um, when x, yeah. So, no, it's strictly greater. So now let's go back to this piece here. And in place of e to the tx, we're going to just put in tx. And so this, this piece is less than that piece, okay? Well, um, also, we since this is all positive, if we only look at 0 to the infinity, we just decreased it too. So we decreased it twice. Oh, actually, we decreased it once, first of all. Everything's the same, but we just decreased it from zero to infinity. Then from here to here, we use this inequality to go here. Now, um, so let's let's take out the pi and take out the t. And then we're going to add, take it times two and divide by two, and that's what we get here. So this is, this is equal. And the reason we do that is we can do a u substitution and this becomes 1 over u du, constants stay the same, we're still integrating 0 to infinity. And this, the antiderivative of that is log of u. Now we evaluate it at, at these limits. And so now we need to, you know, so this is the smaller, it, you know, this is even smaller than the true integral that we want to find. But where is this, um, where is this positive? We need to find values of t that this is positive. And it turns out that any value of t that we pick, um, this is going to go to infinity, unless we pick t equals 0. And so this is only finite when t is equal to 0. And then there's a, a uh, theorem that, that illustrates, or, uh, well, no, it's, just, it's only finite when t equals 0, so we can't find any moments using this moment generating function. And so here's a note. We showed in this video, moment generating function of part one, that if any moment is infinite or does not exist, and we know that the first moment of a Cauchy does not exist, that implies that the moment generated function is not finite in any open interval about z. So we kind of knew that we were going to get this. This is only finite in at zero. No open interval about um, t because of this theorem. Now you can't go backwards. You can't say, oh, this is not finite in an open interval, so therefore there are no moments. That is not true. It's the other way. If the, it says if the moment is infinite or doesn't exist, then there is no open interval about the moment generating function. And so in this uh, video, we prove that and show that if you want to go review that. Um, so well, that's all I have for today for the Cauchy distribution. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please like it and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.